And welcome to the Expert CR Secrets Podcast, where we believe most commercial real estate brokers, luxury realtors, and realtors struggle with clarifying their passive income options. Not having a clear plan is the enemy, and using a proven brokerage model, such as the EXP commercial model, and purchasing investment real estate is the best way for you to grow your wealth. We're also streaming live, by the way, on capitalgainstaxsolutions.com as well. Um, I'm your host, Brett Swartz, and each episode I'm joined by some of the best commercial real estate brokers, agents, luxury realtors, and passive income wealth advisors in the world where they share their ideas, deal stories, and inspiration so together we can make complex brokerage strategies simple and passive income plans achievable. I'm excited about our next guest. He is, I think, besides, um, he might be my, my favorite, most, most favorite place to be city-wise uh, that I've ever been to. Um, he's out of the great state of Massachusetts, and Boston is where he's he's headquartered, although he's expanding into New York these days. Um, he is a former Sotheby's agent. He is former Keller Williams agent. He's now with EXP, and he does uh, focus on residential um, single family as well as luxury space in the real estate world. Please welcome to the show with me, Joe Turco. Hey, Joe, how are you doing, sir? Hey, great to be with you, man. Excited to be here. And, uh, you know, I can't wait till the next time you come to my fair city. Beautiful. Absolutely. I'd love to connect with you there. I got family, by the way, in Concord and uh, I used to have some family in uh, Brimfield. I've been to the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, right? But my nice. most favorite is Boston and uh the history and the culture and the people it's just really fantastic yeah man go down that freedom trail and i mean that's one of the great things about my city and that i love especially working with different clients is not only do i get to expose them to the historical freedom trail but the freedom trail to generating and building wealth and to managing their properties their wealth and their strategies to really get that freedom that they want, not only for themselves, but for, you know, their kids, their grandkids, and that generational style of wealth. Beautiful. I'm going to dive all into that here in a minute. Um, and also understanding the dynamics of your market, that is your real estate market. Um, here with Joe Turco. By the way, if you want to learn more about Joe Turco, even right now, because you're just dying to find out, you can go to turcogroups.com. That's turcogroups.com. So Joe, for our listeners, though, and for myself, getting to know you for the first time, would you give us a little bit more about your story and your current focus? Yeah. So, I mean, my story is kind of a simple one. It's out of college, I went into the footwear industry. I got to spend a lot of time working for some of the top brands. Uh, we won't say who, but you know, I'm sure you can just do it. And I got to live overseas in different countries and get exposed to a lot of great different things, as well as just different models on how to run a business, how to market a business, and how to be the best of the best. And what I did seven years ago was decide to come back home stateside and to marry my lovely wife and to you know start building a new business here. And we did that with real estate. So it's where we've taken all of the best things from that experience and we've brought them to you here in Boston as part of the luxury market, as part of the general market. And it's been a great experience. And I've gotten to meet a lot of wonderful people and do a lot of help through charity. And that's kind of my big thing is what is important to me is being able to fund my charity work. And I do that through my business. Beautiful. Absolutely love that. You know, Joe, I've been, I believe we've all been given certain gifts in this life. And I believe these, some people call them strengths, some people call them superpowers. Um, I believe these are God given gifts and these gifts have been given to us to be a blessing and help to others. So I want you to go back maybe to your high school days, maybe university days, maybe the days, the early days at Nike, right? And I want you to maybe identify for us maybe one or two gifts that you believe you were given and how that helps, um, helps you help and bless other people today. So I think one of the biggest things was honestly being an empathic person, being someone that could, you know, really connect with people and to understand what they're feeling and to help them through different processes. Because let's be honest, no matter how many times you've done it, real estate specifically can be very stressful. It can be where, you know, there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of nerves and being able to be empathic to those people's feelings and being able to help them go from point A to point B seamlessly 
And in many instances, if I'm doing my job correctly, where they felt, oh my God, I don't even know if I need Joe because this was so easy. I've done my job well. So I think that's kind of one of my big superpowers is being able to relate to people as well as able to convey information to them in a way that they are receptive to. So it's kind of the in and out, the push and the pull, being able to, you know, read the room and then also being able to then communicate back in a highly effective manner. Beautiful. And your wife must love you, right? Because I mean, that's empathetic, good listener, well, help me feelings, you know, but you're right. The, the real estate um, deals, you know, these are some of the biggest transactions and maybe the number one transaction in, in, the, in the person's maybe entire life. Right. And so the stakes are huge. And so having a trusted viral advisor like Joe Turco on your side to help you understand what's going on, right? And Joe's been through this many times with his clients. And so um, being a calming voice, I love that, helping others through the process and then conveying information for um, for the individual. Is that a fair summary, Joe? I think that's a great summary. And I think that's the thing too, is like when you focus on that, this is something where it's one of the biggest financial things that you can do in your life, hopefully many times to kind of continue and build that. If you have a misstep, it's going to set you back, not days, not weeks, but potentially decades. So having that type of trusted advisor that really will bring you that level of expertise, experience, and advocacy is so important. Beautiful. So let's dive right into that, understanding the dynamics of your market and and and, and, and finding and working with great great uh, real estate professionals like yourself, Joe. So what's the biggest secret to uh, understanding the dynamics of your particular market? And how do you use that to help uh, your clients when they're buying or selling real estate? So this one is going to seem a little different and a little unconventional. Um, it's basically where we're such a high value market with such extreme competition, who you know matters. So it's the difference between being influential or an influencer. It's where you have to look at who is getting the deals done, whether they're on the market, off the market with pocket listings, but who is the deal flowing through? Who are the power players? So by being one of those people and then also having access and good relationships to those type of people is where as a client, you're getting the biggest benefit because here where competition is fierce, we're always in the top three for most expensive cities for real estate. It's hugely important to have access, to be able to say, hey, does your agent, is he in your phone to some of the biggest players? And I can tell you, not only here in my city, but across the country, whether it's Ryan Serhant, Josh Altman, you know, Dan Beer, Kyle Whistle, all of the major players across the country, my name's in their phone. That's the type of person that you need helping you, especially in Boston real estate. Beautiful. So developing those relationships and especially with those who are um, the most active and closing the most deals and have access to the inventory off market deals um, and and being uh, being able to connect well with and play well with others. Is that a fair summary, Joe? Yeah, that's just it. You know, like we play well in the sandbox and we love you know, having fun with friends. So it's where that type of mentality is where it carries over to the clients and just, it makes it where they get the benefit of all of the work that we've done over the years. Love it. Yeah, that's great. I love working on teams and and then uh, and then connecting well with others. Um, okay, so that's number one is is developing good relationships within the brokerage community uh, and understanding that, that dynamic of where the deals are flowing through in that particular marketplace, right? And then being able to um, to take the relationship that they have with Joe to try to win that deal. So that's number one. What would be number two to understanding the dynamics of your market? I think the other big thing is that how you structure your deals here is hugely important. You know, especially with luxury clients, you know, they may have lived in their home for like 20 years, knowing how to approach that and what's going to potentially be the most incentivizing to either help them sell their home or to potentially on the buying side, what is going to incentivize them in this high competition time period to accept your offer? What are the factors? What are the kind of nitty gritty of diving into it where 
those people that are affluent, that do have generational wealth or that are aspiring to it are going to be receptive to. And I think that's kind of where a lot of people, you know, miss the boat a little bit is they don't get to that level where they're looking at the minutia and they're saying, okay, what can I do to set us apart on either side of this deal? Excellent. Okay. So that's number two. And, uh, oh, but let me, let me type one before we go to the next one. So how to structure the deal. And that's really, it's actually really, it's most, the most important thing, right? I always say, and by the way, as a commercial real estate professional myself with, uh, with you both at EXP here, I always say we're not in the business of selling real estate. We're in the business of, of solving clients problems, right? And when you can get on the other side and sit down with them and say, Hey, Mr. Sell, you've lived there for 20 years. How do we structure this deal in a way that helps to solve your problems? Well, what might be one of your problems? Well, it might be capital gains tax, right? Like we just did a deal in Palo Alto for 8.3 million for a client. He was in fact, one of the top realtors himself at Keller Williams, uh, multiple years, and he's been there for 30 years. And he used the deferred sales trust for the first time deferred capital gains tax. You see his biggest problem was beyond his 121 exclusion, right? To the last five years, you get the 500 if you're married, 250 single, but beyond that, he owed about $800,000 of tax. And so you look at that and you go, okay, what's his biggest problem? His biggest problem is his $800,000. So how can you structure the deal? Well, you can use the deferred sales trust, kind of like a 1031 exchange yeah. to defer the tax. So um, any thoughts on just folks that perhaps are in that same circumstance right now, Joe, who have lived in a primary home in you know uh, a really nice area um, in in the Boston uh, metro, and are facing the same thing. Are you are you seeing that on your end? So we are, and that's the big thing is you know those are people that really aren't eligible for that 1031 exchange. So they have to find other methods to kind of diversify their options. So it's where you know you have to take a 360 view approach to it. You can't have it be where you know. If you're looking in the rear view in the past, okay, it's a small window. If you're looking through the windshield and you're in the driver's seat, yeah, that's a little bit bigger, but we got to have that kind of bird's eye 360 degree view on what the situation is, what the options are, and how we can work around it. Because, you know, when you don't have options like the 1031, it it can feel limiting and you, you have to do from a tax standpoint, from an income standpoint, the things that are going to continue that upward progression for you. Yeah, hundred percent. I couldn't say, uh, say it better myself. And by the way, you can learn more about the deferred sales trust at capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. That's what we specialize in and helping agents also understand that, how to use it to grow your business, win more listings, but ultimately solve the problem for your clients which is massive, especially for these highly appreciated areas and for these folks who've lived in their houses for many, many, many years and are basically feeling trapped. Like they literally won't sell if they're going to pay a couple million of tax. They're just going to hold on to it. Uh, we just closed another one in Aptos. It's just south of Santa Cruz. It's on the beach, like a beach house. It was an $8 million sale and we helped the client defer 2.6 million of tax. And literally they would not have sold if it wasn't for the deferred sales trust. So you can learn more about that at capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. Okay, so we've covered the first two ways to, to uh, really understanding um, the dynamics of your market. And the first one again was making sure you're working with an agent who knows the players and or is selling the deals and making sure that 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 they play well in the sandbox to be able to do do deals. Number two was how to structure deals, making sure you're taking a 360 uh, degree view and finding uh, solutions for folks. Is there a third one, Joe, that you could think of right now for, for our listeners? So I think absolutely. And I think it's based on the concept of shouting it from the mountaintop. You need to have a person that whether you're a buyer's agent or a seller's agent that gets the word out there, that shouts it on all forms of advertising, you know, traditional, non-traditional. So where the buzz is not just to, you know, someone's, you know, 200 Facebook friends, but people are hearing it on the radio. They're seeing it on Spotify ads with the new video ads. They're seeing it on Hulu because we're all here in the pandemic and watching a lot of Hulu, a lot of Netflix, a lot of different things like that, where you can't not hear about what is going on with this agent. And that's like the big thing. It's kind of that, you know, almost that star power where it's this person is everywhere. 
I have to check them out. I have to hear about what they're doing. And when you have that type of person and that type of advertising and marketing behind you, you're getting the better deals. You're getting that, you know, top 10% of maximizing returns as opposed to settling for a lesser thing because someone didn't have the means or the knowledge to really present that. And in Boston, it's hugely important. We are such a transient city where there's so many people coming in and out. You have to always be shouting it from the mountaintop. Got it. So shouting from the mountaintop, get the word out using non-traditional and traditional uh, means of, of marketing, radio, Spotify ads, Hulu. This is really interesting. Uh, I haven't thought about the Hulu, the Spotify ads. That's really cool. I this thing called Ringless Reach that I'm kind of exploring as well, which is, you know, you just basically call or, and it, it, or it sends out, you know, voicemails and just lands in like, you know, 100 people or 500 people's uh, voicemails. So being creative with that, is that a fair summary, Joe? That's a fair summary. And that's the thing too, is like, you know, real estate is one of those industries where there is a lot of saturation. There's a lot of options. Everybody knows somebody that quote unquote does real estate, but the people that are the forerunners that are out there doing the interesting things that are getting you out there. I mean, it's the people that started doing things on TikTok where they would be laughed at, but now all of a sudden they have a million followers on TikTok. It's where you don't think about on Spotify how many podcasts you listen to now or how you consume and digest your news and what avenues you're actually seeing. So it's where you want to get in front of the right people at the right time. And it's just it's amazing to see where the industry is going and to be part of that change. Amazing. Yeah. You're inspiring me, Joe, to uh, to get my TikTok game on. I haven't signed up yet. My my kids have learned, you know, kind of heard about it. And, I, you know, they're, you know, I go, maybe, maybe, I should, maybe I should take a peek at that. But that being well, said, uh, you can learn more about Joe Turco at turcogroups.com. That's turcogroups.com. And that's a good transition about the transition of businesses. And I want to uh, dive and touch on on uh, your decision to go to EXP, right? Because this was a big thing yeah. for me five years ago. I was approached with it and I'm like, no, nah, it's not for me. That sounds kind of crazy. I'm a, I'm a, first of all, I'm a commercial guy. Second of all, um, you know, I'm more of the traditional broker. Just started out at Marcus and Millichap, chap. And, you know, and I kind of, I actually didn't even underwrite the model or really look into it. I just kind of, one person told me about it and I kind of dismissed it. I basically, I had my, my, my ego and my pride hat on, but that being said, Joe, I'm curious, what was your story to EXP? Walk us through, um, how you got introduced to it, why you joined and what it looks like now. So that's the thing is like, I was like you introduced to it about four and a half years ago. And I wasn't ready. If I was honest, it was one of those things where I was considering my options and this was a new player. And I just, I, I didn't have the faith at that time of like, Oh, Hey, yeah, this is, you know, amazing. So it took me to learn by failure to you know be with other brands that really just were not focused on the right type of alignment and that's also kind of what brought me to exp is where i am one of the top luxury agents for exp in the city of boston and it's that global network it's that cutting edge technology it is just all of the things that when you're working as a luxury brand that you need to be in and endorsed by for when, you know, very discerning people are looking at not only yourself and your brand, but also the brand of the brokerage that you have. And they're saying, okay, this is an interesting company. This is a company that gets it. They're modern. They're getting things done. They're taking market share. It was a huge factor to me, just the fact that like there was so much opportunity. And the biggest thing was how much alignment and abundance really mattered. So where, you know, having that positive mindset as a culture, not just locally in Boston, but in the entire country where we're seeing people looking to help one another, I kind of liken it to comparing a sprint for runners to a cross country meet. Where, you know, at most brokerages, at most places, you're sprinting to the finish line. You're trying to just win the race yourself. But at EXP, it's more like a cross-country meet because, yes, you can be that 
lead captain on the meet and you're, you know, running, but you're then looking back and you're reaching your hand back to help pull others up in the race across the finish line so that as a team, you guys are being the best of the best and the top. And I mean, that was one of the huge contributors to me realigning my thought process and being open to the thought of it. And it's been exponentially, not to make a joke, just amazing how much support I've gotten, how much my business has grown. And if I'm honest, how many doors have opened just because there were many clients that said, hey, you know what, when you were with XYZ brand, it felt kind of old to me. So I really wasn't interested, but I really love what you are representing with EXP now. Let's start talking. So, I mean, it's it's been a huge boon to me. And that's one of the big things too is, you know, I love telling my story because it often will inspire other people to come to EXP with us and to see the benefits firsthand. And it's just, it's amazing when you get those thank you notes from people saying, oh my God, this has changed my life. This is amazing. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I, I, you say it so well. I love how you say, uh, you, 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 you basically took, or EXP has taken the abundance and alignment and they figured out how to, Co to, to connect that with the real estate professionals. Right. And, and the cross country meet and I, and a, a similar, um, you know, story with EXP myself. And even like nine months ago when I joined, I was like, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. And I told the guys like, I'm not going to recruit anybody. I'm just going to keep selling real estate and, and, and selling the deferred yep. sales trust. And I was kind of testing to see if they would like, if they were going to, it was like a, you know, someone's going to jump behind the thing and say, Oh no, you got to do this. No, like they're truly entrepreneurial. They're truly like mm -hmm. open-minded, you uh, uh, flexible, right? And they want you to bring your strengths and they want you to serve the client and they want you to partner and connect with, on a network that literally is global. 50,000 agents as of, as of uh, I think the last couple of days, it's multiple countries and it's a tech-driven leadership uh, platform is the way I like to think about it, right? That allows us to align and to grow and to get stock ownership, right? And to get revenue Correct. share and to sell real estate on a level that to me, it's just, it just helps level up your game. Any other thoughts on that, uh, Joe? I mean, I think it's spot on what you're saying, man. And I think the great thing too is where a lot of what we're doing is we're increasing our productivity through efficiency because we have people at all levels and all tiers, you know, I'm being mentored by people that have four times my business, 10 times my business, 20 times my business, and I do significant business. And that's the great thing about it is these people are invested in me and in growing what I can do and the brand. So it's where you come in and you're finding all of these like-minded individuals and it's just, it's such a breath of fresh air because there's so much abundance. There's so much good culture. And let's be honest too, in the times that we're in, we have diverse leadership. We have diverse initiatives. We have all of the things that make our country great at play in our company. And I mean, I know you know about this, but I'm sure people out there might have heard couple big names have seen how big this is. We have people like Grant Cardone coming. It's, you know, huge where literal giants in our industry are saying EXP is the way to go. It's the smart thing. You know, if you've watched shows like Shark Tank, hey, are you thinking like a shark or are you thinking like a guppy? It's very well said. I love it. I love it. Uh, what's the biggest uh, false belief you think from especially luxury realtors in particular, right? Because uh, you know, I'm here in California and, you know, I've reached out to some luxury folks. Um, even when we did the $8.3 million deal in Palo Alto for the gentleman selling a, a luxury home, it, it, you know, it, it seems like mm -hmm. it's, it can be a bigger, uh, there's a bigger sense of false belief. So what is that biggest one as it pertains to luxury realtors saying, you know, that that's, that's, that's not going to fit my brand or my style or whatever. Could, could you help us overcome that right now? Yeah. So I think it's a two part thing. I think one that many luxury brokers focus on the wrong thing. They think luxury is about a price point and they're completely wrong. Luxury is about an experience. It's about concierge level service. It's about having proactive thoughts to what your needs are going to be, anticipating them and 
taking care of them before they even surface. So I think that's the one big thing is where you have a lot of, you know, old school luxury agents that think luxury is only about a price point and I'm going to quote unquote, give the same service to everybody, but it's generally poor service because they're so focused on what the dollar signs say. And then I think from a second point of view, it's the fact that they think that because it's a newer company, that it is in some way lesser. And I think the big thing that is bringing many luxury agents like myself, we had a couple other recently come over in Boston, and I know there's a lot of traction in your area coming on, is the fact that people are seeing and wanting a more modern experience. And that's what we offer is the modern experience with technology, with advertising, with social reach, because a lot of people that are now buying into the luxury markets are younger. They have expectations around not doing things the old way, but doing things the current way. Beautiful. Yeah. Very well said. So newer doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily equal lesser, right? Uh, right? Looking for a more modern experience. Uh, and, and a lot of them, are, a lot of folks, they're focused on the wrong thing. And that can be a temptation for all realtors in general is you're focusing on just price, right? Not necessarily terms or the experience and, 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 and anticipating needs um, and then giving a great outcome. Is that a fair summary, Joe? I think that is a spot on summary. I mean, Brett, as always, you know, knocking out of the park. That's why I always love talking to you and, uh, you know, getting to hang out because, you know, we, we get each other to, you know, as the young kids say, we vibing. Yeah, I like it, Joe. I like it. Love it. Okay, great. So that's enough about eXp. By the way, but if you want to learn more about that, you can go to expertcresecrets.com or you can reach out to Jer Joe Turco or Brett Swartz. That's me. To learn more, you can go to turcogroups.com. Uh, that being said, Joe, are you ready for the lightning round? I'm ready for the light now. Let's bring it on. I'll bring the thunder too. All right. So knowing what you know now, if you can go back to your 25-year-old self, what's the one golden nugget you would make sure to tell yourself to do? So the one golden nugget is if you're trying to move a mountain, don't push on it. Pick up a handful of sand each day. Move that handful of sand. Over time, you will move the mountain. If you just keep pushing, all you're going to do is hurt yourself. So much wisdom there. I love that. Let me know when that book comes out, which leads to the second question, which is this, uh, what's the one book you've gifted or recommended the most in the past year? So one of the biggest ones that I've talked about is, um, for the last year, sell it like Serhan, who happens to be my mentor. Great guy. Love when, uh, we get to do stuff together and he actually has a new book, which I, it's a close second, big money energy. So I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to pull a fast one on you in the lightning round. I'm going to make it a two pronged one. I'm going to say both by Ryan Serhant, sell it like Serhant, but also big money energy. Beautiful. Love it. Uh, next question. And we kind of touched on it before, but I want to make sure we crystal clarify this. What's the biggest frustration with capital gains tax deferral for yourself, clients or partners and or the 1031 exchange? I think the biggest thing is that, you know, if they've had their house for 20 plus years that they don't qualify for it and that they don't have the knowledge base. So that's why they have to talk to people like you and to get more information about what their options really are so that they can approach things in the proper manner. Because let's be honest, a lot of people don't know what they don't know. And because of that, they're not making the best decisions for themselves. Yeah. And to that point, by the way, there's a gentleman, you might have heard of him. His name is Rob Lowe. He's out of Hollywood. Yep. And he just uh, used the Deferred Sales Trust. He sold a $45 million primary home in Montecito. You can go to Google and just type Rob Lowe Montecito primary home. See, he and his wife bought it for $13 million, Joe. And now they're looking to sell it for 45 mm -hmm. and they have this huge tax. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? They learn about this Deferred Sales Trust. L is too good to be true. Would have known about it. Not sure. They hire these three attorneys. They pay them like a thousand bucks an hour to try to poke holes in it. And after about a month of due diligence and a hundred thousand dollar legal bill, they just he just used the deferred sales trust. They gave the blessing, all thumbs up. So that was a big, big plug. By the way, you can go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com to learn more about the deferred sales trust. Next question is this, Ryan, or um, not Ryan is the guy you just talked about. Joe, uh, what is um, what is the thing you're most curious about right now? So I think the thing that I'm most curious about right now honestly, is 
what is going to be the new thing that everybody's going to laugh at and that I'm going to do next. A lot of people, for example, laughed at me when I said, hey, I am doing Spotify ads. And then everybody is listening to their playlists. Everybody is listening to different things from home. And guess who's getting more calls than ever? So what I'm most curious about is what new technology is going to really be out there. Is it going to be where the new trend with Clubhouse, the social networking app, is going to take over? And that kind of, you know, listening in on a live podcast type situation is the big thing. Is it going to be where, you know, we have something new that comes out? I'm most curious about where we're going to pivot to and how I can take advantage of it to help you. Amazing. Love that. And I think Wayne Gretzky says that, well, skate to where the puck is going. And one yep. of my business partners was the number one um, at EXP. He's one of the number one uh, Keller Williams agents in the world. He did that seven different times. And that's this is, that's literally his go-to quote. I said, what's the most, how are you so successful? We ask in these masterminds and he goes, well, I just try to follow what Wayne Gretzky said, you skate where the puck is going. So I uh, love that Spotify ads, man. I got to step up my TikTok, my Spotify. I am on Clubhouse. Um, yep. So at least I got one of those three, Ryan, uh, Joe, I love that. I keep saying Ryan, you got me, you got me, so you got Ryan in my mind now, right? This, well, this, I mean, this he's, book, he's, this he's guy, like, I got to meet this guy. I mean, he's got to come on the podcast. Ryan, if you're hearing this, come on my podcast. I'd love to talk with you. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll send him a text. We'll hook you up. Uh, Ryan Serhant is one of the best people out there. Go buy both his books and, uh, you know, tell him Joe Turco sent you because everybody knows Joe. Yeah, I love it. All right. Two last questions and then we'll wrap it up. Um, this is the second to last question. Um, best uh, real estate deal you've ever done? So this is where it's going to, you know, be where people are going to kind of scratch their head. So best real estate deal I've ever done actually was one that was a recent one. And it wasn't for a high price point, but I met this person at my first ever held open house and I stayed in touch with them and we improved their credit and they were a single mother and it took years. And I'm saying almost six and a half years to get them to where they needed to be. And when I tell you that like, it was not the most expensive deal, it was not the most luxury deal, but it was probably the best feel good deal of my entire life because this person cried and I watched and, you know, got to meet with them and their child from the time that that child was two until now they're like, almost nine and a half. And, you know, we stuck with it. We figured it out. We, it, it just, I, I know it sounds like super sappy, but it's hands down. I don't know how a deal is going to top that because this person stuck with it and they did what I've been talking about. They took the handful of sand and they moved the mountain and what a mountain it was. So, I mean, to me, that's that's the top of the mountain for me. And I want to shout her out because she did amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's that's incredible. That could be the opening chapter for your book, How to Move the Mountain with Joe Turco. Okay, Joe, that is at least the last question. How do you stay centered in your values after all your success? You know, going from Nike, uh, you know, uh, having the gifts of of, um, I think he said empathy, yeah, empathy, connecting with others and, and selling luxury, going to EXP, all your success. How do you stay centered in your values and how do you stay encouraged to charge forward to reach new goals? So I do what I like to think of as uh, a mission-based business. Um, so it's where, you know, I have a lot of personal experience with St. Jude's. So I don't do any of my personal business goal setting with sales volume or people helped or things like that. I take a large percentage, 10% off the gross of my business and give it to St. Jude's. So my goals are always based on how much am I giving to them? That's what really drives me. My goal is to one day, someday be the biggest investor or philanthropist 
in St. Jude's because without them, I personally wouldn't be here on this podcast. And I feel like it's so important to be able to give back to something that's literally given me life. So that's how I say motivated because I see it as every deal that I do is helping, you know, eradicate childhood cancer. Beautiful. That's a great way to wrap up the show. Joe, uh, what a beautiful uh, story and a beautiful cause that you're fighting for there at St. Jude's. Uh, for our listeners who want to get in touch with you, would you remind them one last time what's the best place for them to connect with you? Best place is to go to turcogroups.com. Send me a message. I am very responsive. And when we do talk on the phone, you're going to love it. But the thing that you're going to love even more is it says on my voicemail, if you somehow get to it, that I call you back within a business hour and I stick to it. You've never heard of that anywhere in the industry, but with me, it's a promise. Beautiful. And that's T-U-R-C-O groups.com. Joe Turco, it's been more than a pleasure having you on the show. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for sharing a bit about uh, your story, your expertise, helping us all to be uh, better people and better uh, real estate professionals and uh, investors as well. So I want to encourage you to keep using the gifts and talents you've been given to bless others and help people. And also want to thank our listeners for listening to the episode of the Capital Gains Tax Solutions Podcast. We can't do this without you. Please rate, review, subscribe. Um, and remember, we believe that most most commercial real estate agents, brokers, luxury realtors, you know, they struggle with clarifying their passive income options. Not having a clear plan is the enemy and using a proven brokerage model such as the EXP commercial model and purchasing investment real estate is the best way for you to grow your wealth. Hey, if you want to more, hear more about how the EXP commercial model is hands down the best way to grow your real estate business, you can go to expertcrsecrets.com. You can also re reach out to Joe Turco here. And, um, and if you want to learn about the deferred sales trust, remember, Defer that capital gains tax, sale of businesses, real estate, cryptocurrency. You can also save a failed 1031 exchange, high-end luxury homes. You can go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And